Hi everybody, it's Friday, August 30th, 2019. Here's our city bees. Um, they're doing really well. At different times we've seen clusters, you know, bearding. Uh, we got some washboarding today. Neither hive seems to be overly uh, populated and we see pollen coming into both hives. We're still in a bit of a dearth here. But today they're bringing in some nice, there's a little bit of a light color yellow, there's some brighter yellow. Uh, last week they were bringing in some reddish colored pollen and some orange colored pollen. But they're definitely busy. Like I said, we're still kind of in a dearth here and there aren't a whole lot of things flowering, but obviously they're finding something. Here these city bees, I have no artificial pollen set out for these at all. So they're finding a source and they're bringing it in. I've been a little bit bad. Come over and check out this other one. Uh, been a little bit bad. It's probably been about six weeks since I've been into these hives. Just watching the front, monitoring and seeing what's going on. So what's going to happen over the next month? In September, it's going to be really critical to get these girls all set up and ready for winter. So next week, hopefully, my schedule's just been crazy, July and August. But we're back to a regular schedule, good to go. We'll get into these, we'll do another video, and we'll see what's going inside on a neglected hive for, for six weeks. The indications, although not necessarily, but the indications would certainly be that they, you know, they, they are uh, doing well. We're also going to look and see if we need to do any feeding through September to help get them ready. We're going to have our fall flow of goldenrod and different things. They may or may not need supplemental feeding. That's something that we're going to get into. So just a quick little update that they are uh, alive and well. I can't tell any real drastic changes from the cell tower changes that they made. Um, The new panels that they put up on there, make sure I get it in the picture. But I haven't noticed from when I initially set these up back in the spring through the changes that they made through now, they made honey. We pulled honey off of that right hive. The left hive, because they were going to swarm and we split them off twice. So that held them back a little bit. I don't know what's in there. I know we need to get a second box up on there, which we're going to do. And uh, we may steal some resources from the right hive and see how much buildup they can do on, in one month. If we give them supplemental feeding, they can probably get a pretty good, pretty good uh, amount built out. And as we go through the fall flow as well. So there we go. Sorry it's been a while. Just uh, one of them things, but we're going to we're going to definitely get into them. Thanks for watching. Hi everybody. Today is Friday, January 17th, 2020. Hopefully everybody's doing good. Just want to do a little update and interesting. It's been a little while, but on the City Bee series, um, we've had a really unusually mild winter so far here in the Midwest, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, but what we had is something interesting. One of the last videos I did on these city bees, we got this cell tower, and it is, uh, they were putting 5G panels. And I had some people question me in the comments, say, oh, it's not 5G. Well, I just got an email confirmation because as the tower site owner, and they pay me rent every month, way too low, but nonetheless, it's a contract that I inherited with the property. Um, anybody can go do it themselves. Go to tmobileforbusiness.com and it's going to take you and show you that 5G is completely available right now, currently, and that they're claiming, boasting that they are the biggest coverage that most spots. You can pause this and read it. This is the, the email, but it's all in the you go to the website and you can read it. You know, other 5G only covers city blocks. Our 5G covers thousands of miles. And there's coverage all across the United States. It's covering like, from what, at a glance, I don't know, 80, 70% or something like that. So it is up and active and 
and it is running. Well, shortly after that happened, after they put them, changed out the panels up there, something that I had noticed is we started getting a lot of bees right over here on this dock that they're on is a night light. And at that light, it's a 250 watt uh, metal halide light. Never had any problems through the spring and then into the summer until they put them panels up. And what happened is you can kind of see a, a, through the course of walking, but over, the, over a couple months, we had a massive amount of bees that at night were flying over into that light, that they did not do that. We didn't have any anything like that at all during the uh, during the spring and early summer, as well as the bees here. Now, part of this is there's a normal die off of the summer bees. It's completely normal and natural when you get into October, November to have a lot of those summer bees die off. We've had some really warm days. Uh, a week ago or so, a week and a half, we had 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which was really unusual for January in Cincinnati. But we did, and there's still bees in there. They're still flying. But it's really going to be an interesting test in the spring to really see what further effect we have. Can anybody explain to me that light bulb has been up there for years? It was up there and it didn't have any impact on the bees at the beginning. However, it was correlated right after they put up those panels is when I started having the bees going and fly. I guess they're flying around that light at night, flying around, burning up their energy and dying and falling to the ground in a path you can't see I should have done this video a few weeks ago but I just got that email just want to share it I don't want to be a conspiracy conspiracy theorist uh, sometimes I like to read them and just kind of brush it off as you know oh it's a conspiracy but at the same time you got a question on this one you know just what just what is going on we got a couple more months to go through to get out of winter and we'll see what happens but there again, anybody that's really interested, I just the jury's out. But for, for those that are really interested in following the whole 5G situation and its effects, you know, it, it, there's no other correlation that I can put with, with the bees except the 5G panels. Nothing else has changed. Nothing at all has changed except for that. T-Mobile for business.com and you can they got a whole big website telling about where it's available you can type in a zip code or look at a look at a map and they can tell you all kinds of things about how it's going to be so great and revolutionize the world um, I don't know I don't have answers but there you go I'll be having some more videos soon thanks for watching You've probably been hearing a lot about 5G and how companies plan to implement these in various locations across the globe. At face value, this appears to be a great idea. The companies are promising us that we'll be receiving much faster download speeds. In fact, some researchers have estimated that these upgrades will mean wireless networks will be around 10 to 20 times faster than they currently are. This is great news as it means that tasks will be completed faster, more people will be able to upload photographs and videos, and there will be wider coverage and more stable connections. This seems like a great idea and one that people are very much looking forward to happening. However, there has been some concerns that these 5G towers will actually be causing more harm than good. It's been reported by some websites that these towers are actually harming the local wildlife. Going back in 2018, Hundreds of birds were discovered in a park in the Netherlands. Reports said that these birds mysteriously dropped to the ground whilst they were flying. Some of the first reports came in from residents who said they had witnessed the birds falling from the sky. Although these reports can't be confirmed, alleged eyewitnesses described the birds becoming motionless while being around 50 feet in the air. One person said it was as if the birds flew through an area that had poison in it, as several of them dropped at once. 
Interestingly enough, it was reported that this event happened during a 5G tower installation. Shortly after the tower was erected, people nearby reported that all walks of wildlife started to act strange. This ranged from small species such as that of insects to ducks and humans. Locals who fed the ducks reported that none of them wanted to eat the food they had brought, saying that they had never seen this type of behaviour before. They went on to say that the ducks would even start to swim in a strange manner, such as flapping their wings for several minutes and dunking their heads under the water for a prolonged period of time. These events and the constant posts on social media caused people to speculate whether the two events were linked. After all, the locals reported that none of these strange behaviours were happening before the 5G tower was put into place. The next thing to happen was for there to be an official investigation into what was going on. It's reported that between mid-October and the beginning of November, there was an estimated 340 birds that were found. None of them showed signs of life or distress which caused even more confusion. The Netherlands Food and Consumer Product Safety Authority said that common viruses were not the cause of these birds' deaths. In fact, the researchers hadn't come to a conclusion on what caused the birds to pass away in the first place. These events, however, have been witnessed all across the globe. Some have suggested one of the reasons this happens to the birds is because of shock, suggesting that loud noises could be behind the events. Once again, though, this isn't confirmed, and those who have researched these cases have suggested that when this happens, it's more likely a freak accident. One of the main reasons the 5G tower was blamed is because of a Facebook post. It turns out one of the first Facebook posts accusing the tower of being the culprit had over 125,000 shares. This reached a massive audience and from then on people just shared it onto various groups and pages. Social media analysts estimated the posts reached millions of people within just a few days. This was one of the criticisms the researchers had with the 5G tower being the culprit as no research had been done at this point. Interestingly enough, several months later it turned out that there had been a 5G test in the area where the birds had died off, but this happened over four months before the event took place, meaning that it couldn't have been the 5G tower that caused these birds to pass away in the way that they did. For this test, it was reported that the Dutch equivalent of the FCC allowed the company Huawei to test in this area. Huawei was asked for a statement and didn't respond, but a representative of a large mobile operator in the Netherlands said that these tests never happened in the first place. This is where many people are getting confused and are saying that they think someone is lying. Regardless of the outcome, there are many believe that the bird deaths are not mysterious and comes down to telecommunication companies testing in the area. It wouldn't be long before another similar event would occur. It turns out this event is eerily similar to the one that happened last year. Several news articles have reported that police in North Wales are investigating the mysterious deaths of hundreds of birds. It's reported that between 230 and 315 birds have passed away from unknown causes close to Anglesey. Once again, locals who witnessed the event described it as looking unnatural and that many birds suddenly dropped from the sky. After law enforcement was called on, several of the birds were sent away in order to see something that had happened to them internally. The go-to answer in these situations is that the birds have been poisoned, but as many have pointed out, it's very unlikely that they would all drop at once. This event happened around 10 days ago, and a few residents close by did report hearing loud noises shortly before the birds were found. This caused some people to suggest that the military was involved, or even testing a new type of aircraft. The Ministry of Defence did, however, release a statement saying that the birds' fate was not caused by them, and that there was no connection between them and what happened. Interestingly, out of the hundreds of birds that were discovered, none were found in the nearby fields. Rather, they were all discovered on the road, something that made the police officers at the time question what had happened. Sadly, when it comes to these types of events, it's rarely that you'll get an answer for what happened to them. Many people the world over have reported that just before these types of events happen, they hear mysterious loud booms. Loud mysterious booms have been reported all over the world, but one place where they are commonly heard is that of the United States. 
Recently, it was announced that thousands of people living in towns across the US were hearing these loud booms. In Pennsylvania, for example, they were being heard for months and no one could come up with an answer for what was causing it. Due to it going on for so long and even affecting people's lives, the authorities stepped in and decided they needed to investigate what was going on. The FBI and Pennsylvania State Police said they were taking on the case and would try to get to the bottom of it. Authorities even asked that if anyone heard the noises to report it to them as soon as they could and not to investigate it on their own. What's strange is that no one seems to be able to identify where the noises are coming from or what is making them. The majority of people reported that the sounds happened between 1am and 4am. Some of the locals said that whatever is causing these noises must be large because the booms are very loud. However, when the residents have tried to capture whatever is making these noises on film, they are unable to. This has led many to believe that the military could be behind the noises and that they could possibly be testing out some new technology. Local police received hundreds of reports and complaints about the booms, even saying that when it was happening during the early hours of the morning, it was waking them up. One woman reported that when it was happening in the early hours of the morning, her daughter would run in and cry as she was scared about what was going on. As you can imagine, all types of theories have been presented in order to try and explain the mysterious booms. However, as of today, the loud noises remain a mystery. What's odd is that usually when these sorts of things happen, it's normally only a handful of people who witness it. But in this case, the numbers go into thousands, meaning that it's unlikely the noises are hoaxes. Wheat Ridge Police Department spokesperson says police are likewise baffled and had this to say. We've had descriptions that are everything from a transformer blowing to a sonic boom that you might hear with an airplane passing overhead or a jet passing overhead, and certain fireworks that can give off loud noises. The challenge for us is that there isn't any evidence of what this could be. Some have compared these noises to the mysterious hum. The small town of Taos, located in the southern state of New Mexico, is no stranger to odd reports and strange sightings. Over the years, residents have reported that a strange humming sound of unknown origin can be heard. Many speculated that it could have been nothing more than perhaps a modern art installation or mundane cause. It did not take long, however, for this strange hum to be treated more seriously when further reports began coming in one after the other. Nicknamed the Taos Hum, this strange noise was first reported back in the early 1990s, which sparked Joe Mullins, a local professor of engineering at the University of New Mexico, to conduct research into the matter. He found that the hum itself could only be heard by a very select group of people that only made up 2% of the local population. After setting up sensitive equipment and did extensive testing of the area, he could find no unusual vibrations or sounds. Whether the noise itself was caused by external or internal factors was completely undetermined. Not only did this puzzle the professor, but it seemed to be an unexplainable phenomenon for other researchers of whom looked into the matter. To this day, reports of a strange humming at different times of the day have been heard and no one finds themselves to be any closer to an answer after all these years. But what do you make of the birds that are falling from the sky and the mysterious noises being heard around the world? <laughs>